Now let's talk about the cope to coated vesicle formation and its delivery. So where the cope to coated vesicle formation and delivery is required, it's from uh, the production house or uh, the endoplasmic reticulum lumen uh, towards the Golgi apparatus. So normally the proteins are produced inside the endoplasmic reticulum lumen and then the protein is transported uh, from that endoplasmic reticulum towards the Gol cis Golgi uh, networks and finally the protein will be modified and sorted in the cis Golgi network then we have the COP1 vesicle uh, take its point and take its job and finally uh, the protein is destined to its particular destination point so this is the first part of our journey and we are going to uh, discuss this in little bit more detail so the basic idea again in this case remains the same that means we have a cargo protein and we need a cargo receptor and the receptor will have two different attachment sites. one is uh, for the target protein or the cargo protein uh, which is present inside the endoplasmic uh, reticulum lumen here we can see it and uh, the extracellular not extracellular the cytosolic uh, receptor which is uh, the receptor for the coat proteins in this case the coat proteins are cop as we know but uh, we have uh, several different types of associated proteins uh, which which is working together along with COP2 proteins to actually pinch the vesicle out from the endoplasmic reticulum which is in this case our dimer of sec 23 and sec 24 these are the actually mutant proteins which are known here because we if we mutate these proteins then finally we can have trouble with docking or making the vesicle from the endoplasmic reticulum okay so now let's look at the mechanism in detail so in this case what we need we need uh, a protein which which all which uh, starts this all uh, of this reaction procedure and this is called the SAR1 protein. So this SAR1 protein is actually key protein for establishing this particular COP2 vesicular transport. So we have a SAR1 protein along with bind which is with GDP. So in this case the SAR1 protein is inactive in uh, inactive state. So SAR1 protein is there. We have the amphipathic helix which is embedded with the SAR1 protein which is embedded inside. So this is the hydrophobic uh, region of the SAR1 protein which is embedded inside. So it is not open out. So uh, whenever the SAR1 protein is uh, at, uh, activated via the substitution of GDP with GTP uh, then this amp amphipathic helix will open up and it will finally can embed this amphipathic helix with the endoplasmic reticulum membrane or outer membrane of endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. So now uh, what establishes this substitution of uh, this GTP, uh, GTP uh, with GTP? As we know, we have the GTP, uh, the guanine exchange factor in cell in abundant amount. So we, again in this case, we have the SAR1 GIF or SAR1 guanosine exchange factor. And this SAR1 guanosine exchange factor is sit on the endoplasmic reticulum and it facilitates to, uh, to remove this GDP and attach GTP with the SAR1 uh, protein and finally activates the SAR1 protein and the SAR1 protein uh, opens up this amphipathic helix which will finally embed uh, into this endoplasmic reticulum membrane and then uh, it sits uh, sit on like this and after the SAR1 GTP established itself like that in, in such conformation it, it has an affinity to attract different protein molecules and SEC23 and SEC24 are some of those kinds of molecules so the dimer of SEC23 and SEC24 molecules come together nearer to this SAR1 GTP and the SEC23 is actually have a binding site for the SAR1 GTP molecule. It binds with the SAR1 GTP molecules, but the SEC24 molecules is not only not have the binding site for SAR1 GTP, but it has a binding site for the cargo receptor. So, so the SEC23 uh, attaches with uh, the SAR1 GTP, and SEC24 have a binding site for the cargo receptor. In, in, in other scene, the cargo receptor in turn binds with the cargo protein in, uh, which is made inside the endoplasmic lumen a and it finally attaches with the SEC24. So what we have, we are forming a complex of different molecules. So first of all, the SAR1 GDP comes in, GDP goes out, GTP comes in, it is activated, it embeds itself and all the process is getting started. The SEC23, SEC24 dimer comes in, SEC23 attaches with this SAR1 GTP and SEC24 attaches with this uh, cargo receptor. And after doing this, we forming a complex. And after forming this pre-vesicular complex, we need to have the master coat protein, which will actually coat all this protein together to finally make a vesicle and pinch it out from the endoplasmic reticulum. 
and what we have we have the scope 2 uh, protein so cope 2 proteins comes in which is denoted here in orange color cope 2 comes in and it will coat all these necessary ingredients for the protein vesicular uptake and it will uptake all these things together and so not only this uh, cope 2 proteins what you can find here but this in this cope 2 proteins we have several subunits of proteins like sec 13 sec 31 again the sec proteins are the mutant proteins and the sec proteins are coming together they attaches with the sec uh, 24 and sec 23 proteins and, and also they are interacting with this uh, membrane of uh, endoplasmic reticulum and finally they start to pinch out a particular area of vesicle uh, to form a proper formed vesicle and the uh, properly formed vesicle is made and they are pinched out from the endoplasmic reticulum and finally we have the COPE2 coated vesicle and this vesicle is destined to deliver towards the uh, cisterns, uh, cis golgi network okay for and then further uh, processing will be made and finally the protein will be destined to its destination point that's uh, that's all and I, I hope that's gonna help you and this is a structure a 3d structure for the scope 2 vesicle associated protein uh, this is the structure so this is a, a structure like icosahedron but this is not a proper icosahedron symmetry but this is a very very good uh, representation of this coat how the coat is looking so it's it's a it's a bulkier structure it's a vesicle structure Okay, I hope that's going to help you. Thank you.